Hello again, I'm Don Lang. Welcome to Seasoned Citizens Present. Today I'm very proud to present a very special guest as far as I'm concerned, and I think you'll be pleased too, Dr. George Parks. Welcome, George. Thank you. George is a local resident of many years ago, so I'll kind of ask George his history in the sense you were born in Muscatine. We don't want to talk about the season year. It doesn't make any difference, George, but kind of explain. Uh, your history in the Muscatine area previously, please. Well, uh, as you said, I was born here in 1924. You're going to tell. I'm going to tell. <laughs> and uh, stayed here until I went to college. And uh, as most of you probably would know that have lived here a long time, my uh, father was county recorder for many, many years. And uh, I have one brother who still uh, was four years older than I, and he still remains in Muscatine. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, after, of course, leaving here, then I attended the University of Iowa for a couple of years, and then World War II came along, mm -hmm. and uh, I enlisted into the Navy and was sent to my third year of pre-med at Miami University of Oxford, Ohio. Completion of that, I was. Uh, sent to Great Lakes for a while and then down to Indiana University to med school, which I completed and have retained, uh, stayed in Indiana the rest of my life. Okay, now uh, you spoke of pre med. Obviously, you're a doctor, and I think <clears throat> we've discovered you were a GP, uh, mm -hmm. which in those days that was about all we did have. We weren't really into the field of <clears throat> everyone having a different title of, of working on a heel or a <laughs> a knee or what have you, or GP, which you don't find that many nowadays. And I uh, think you and I discussed pretty well. We'll get into that in a moment. How about our um, marriage? Let's talk about that lovely lady that you married, who was also a Muscatine girl. That's right. right. I, I married uh, a classmate of right. mine, uh, Marion Couts. Uh, her father, of course, was associated with the Couts Baking Company we for remember many, that. many years. <laughs> And uh, uh, we've been married, uh, we were married in uh, 45, been married now uh, 46 years. Yeah, coming up, 50. And uh, the years go by pretty fast. Uh, tell us about family, George. I know we... Okay, I have uh, two sons. I have a son, Michael, who uh, uh, lives in Hartford City, Indiana, is where we're located now. And I've been in Hartford City uh, all the years of my practice other than a couple of years in the service, which mm -hmm. means that uh, 43 years now. And my uh, son, Michael, is a uh, principal at a middle, middle school. And my daughter uh, has been a lab technician and is now in uh, marketing of a large lab in uh, Muncie, Indiana, uh, which is connected with Paul Hospital, which is a big hospital in Muncie. Okay, so inadvertently you became a Hoosier opposed to a Hawkeye over the years. Now, you told me how this transpired. You might want to tell us why you became a Hoosier opposed to staying in Muscatine. I think you gave me a very uh, explanatory reason for having left the area. Well, uh, <laughs> I think that probably uh, we're still uh, Hoosiers. Uh, we're Hoosiers, but we're still probably Hawkeyes. Absolutely. Because, Never fades. Uh, we, uh, <laughs> Just the other day, our grandchildren are here, and uh, we went to Iowa City, and uh, they have bought uh, quite a little bit of paraphernalia, you know, with the Hawkeyes on, so we're, we're still a Hawkeye. <laughs> but the reason I uh, really uh, stayed in Indiana was partly due to the service idea. I had a temporary exception to the University of Iowa completion of my third year pre-med, and uh, through the Navy, I went to Great Lakes, and there was a six-month waiting period before I could come to the University of Iowa. And, of course, uh, orders were issued about two months after I was there to attend Indiana University, and I'll mm -hmm. have to admit I was happy to uh, get to go there. And so then, uh, after completing that, well, uh, we, we looked over some areas in uh, Iowa, and I thought I was fairly young to come back to this area. I was only 25 years old when I completed medical school. And uh, so we stayed in Indiana, and uh, uh, then with uh, the Korean bit, I was called back into service, and I served two years in the Air Force, 51 to 53. Okay. But uh, there again, I, uh, my service time was in the States, 
and uh, we finally then just decided to remain at Hartford City. Uh, although uh, we still say that when we come to Muscatine, we're coming home. Right, I'm sure. Well, you're both natives, so obviously that would be true. Okay, you've uh, you've hit upon Hartford City a couple times. That obviously is your residence. Mm -hmm. Now, I think you've also told me it's a huge metropolis there in <laughs> Indiana. Yes. It's even smaller than Muscatine. <laughs> it's only about 7,000 population, and I think it was 7,043 40, years ago, and it's 7,000 today. <laughs> and uh, although I think I delivered about 1,500 babies in my time, it uh, seemed like we must have had the same number of deaths because it stays the same. Huh. But it's a, a town located about 15 miles north of Muncie and 45 miles south of Fort Wayne and uh, maybe 100 miles from Indianapolis. So we, we have access to uh, larger cities. And uh, uh, the only uh, thing that is original in Hartford City, the original uh, uh, overhead door was produced in Hartford City. OK. That's something to point out, I guess, besides George Parks being physician there. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have other. Uh, we, we've always had about four or five uh, general practitioners uh, in the town and a couple of, of another town of about 10 miles away. So we've had about five to seven physicians, and that's what we have today. Well, for, well that's strange. And that's the size of the committee. I guess I don't know. I just figured, and I don't like to use the word one horse, but I just assumed being that small that one physician would be the sufficient uh, number. Obviously, it isn't. And, and you all are all uh, busy are, all the time, I'm all sure. All are busy, and sure. we have about a 50 bed hospital that is a general type hospital mm -hmm. with a, have one surgeon. We did have an ear, nose, and throat man there when I uh, first began practice. We don't now. The only specialty we have is um, we have a, a great center, though, in Muncie, which is, I say, 15, 20 miles away. Okay. And with modern medicine, you know, that it's no problem to get to those. Things. No, they're within reach availability and of course you work with them obviously throughout the time too and something else that was uh, touched upon in our brief conversation um, you are uh, you were telling me that you have gone back and kept up with current I mean everything has changed over the years we were discussing how different things are nowadays over the previous time when you first started practicing medicine and the different aspects that you have to keep up abreast of Lots of changes in the course of the 43 years, and uh, you do have to keep abreast in general practice, and there are seminars uh, at the uh, university, which is uh, Indiana uh, Med School is located in Indianapolis, and uh, there are other hospitals that put on seminars mm -hmm. to keep you uh, abreast with changes. And of course, specializing in things. they. The practice of medicine, of course, in 43 years, I think back when I started, we were in four nights a week. And uh, you don't find very many physicians no. in at all in Not the at evenings all. anymore. <laughs> Not at all. And very few may be in on Saturday. Uh, emergency medicine, you know, the emergency room uh, people uh, who have emergencies or at an odd hour seem to go to the emergency rooms, you know, more than looking for the family physician. Sure, sure. But then you're on call for some I'm on call. Sure. Yeah. I imagine you fellas have to trade off those uh, particular factions of being on call for the emergency. So. Well, as I mentioned to you, it's been now uh, about 17 years since I've got out of the obstetrical field, <laughs> right. and that has certainly cut down your night calls a lot. <laughs> right. And uh, and I I told you Don a little bit. I this is reminded because we do high school physicals and uh, this girl came through. It was uh, her, she's a senior and it means that 17 years ago that's the last one that I delivered. Yeah. That was so, rather apropos, wasn't it? Yes, <laughs> all of a sudden that that come up. <laughs> right, right. After all those years, yeah. kind of that kind of uh, placed you in perspective of where you are where in life, right? <laughs> right. Right. Um, did you, now the, the children all went to Hartford City then as far as the schooling is concerned, then they went on to where? Well, um, State of Indiana. Uh, the, my son uh, uh, came here for one year oh. at the community college his oh, freshman great. year and lived with the 
uh, grandparents, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, O.M. Couts, that lived out on Lord Avenue. Oh, I didn't realize that. And then he uh, came back to uh, attend Taylor University, which is a uh, university, a uh, Christian-type university located about 10 miles from where we live. And uh, my daughter, <clears throat> she... Uh, she went to Wake Forest one year. Seems like they wanted to get away from home for one well, year. <laughs> I guess that's uh, appropriate too. We all did. I mean, let's yeah. say that in our life sometime. And then she came back and attended three years at Butler University, which is in Indianapolis. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then, uh, as I say, both married and have, have, uh, are living in uh, Hartford City at this time. We're just within a block of us, so we feel real <laughs> fortunate. They came home. Came back they home. They left, but they are home now. Yeah, well, we hope they'll stay home. Well, I'm you know? sure you do. I'm <laughs> sure Marion is proud to have the grand... Well, I think you mentioned already that you have the pleasure, I assume, of having two grandchildren with you right. on this particular venture. That's right. Well, that's they, great. When, we, when we, we generally try to get uh, Muscatine, or you might say home, <laughs> right. about every year once to visit either when my mother was living and uh, then now, of course, to see my brother. And uh, the grandchildren, two of them, my daughter's two girls, uh, one is in the, gonna be in the fourth grade, one will be a junior. They've come along the last few years and they love to come and, and visit and uh, maybe uh, get a little swimming in at the holiday. Sure. <laughs> well, this has almost become a second home to them in, in, yeah. in the sense, although they are not a native as you can relate to. You and Marion can say you are, and like you say, it's still home to you when you return. Uh, just conversation-wise, can you relate to any particular faction in your life in Hartford City that would be outstanding in the line of a physician? I'm sure you've had some experiences that were mind-boggling or whatever statement you'd want to make. Are you recall well, like that, I'm putting you on the spot, yeah, I, I but try, <laughs> It's like trying to think of the most outstanding thing that's maybe happened. I, uh, no, I just would say that uh, Hartford City is a small town, a friendly town, and uh, I feel that I've uh, been fortunate to uh, have lived there all these years. It's, uh, like I say, we have a good uh, educational system, and uh, the uh, churches are excellent, mm -hmm. and uh, it's just a friendly town. Well, the one thing about uh, that structure of size, I'm sure you had a fantastic relation patient to doctor because again I mean even in a town this size everyone knows everyone mm -hmm. although lately I'm a little <laughs> discouraged I've lost track of a lot of people now but at that size I mean you would know uh, everyone it seems uh, you know it does seem yeah that way, right? so that it's it's a more togetherness than I'm thinking it would be in, in a larger like Indianapolis you can kind of get lost in the sense there but this you've seen people every day and I think would be an outstanding Feature, I think it's maybe why you chose that. Uh, I think partly, uh, I might relate one other thing, why I chose Hartford City. I, I went to various cities in uh, Indiana to, that seemed to need, and I remember going up to uh, Warsaw, which is up in the uh, Lake Country, okay. uh, northern part, a beautiful town, and I knew an elderly physician there who was retired and uh, through Methodist Hospital where I interned uh, in Indianapolis and I went to call on him and he said well if I start out I wouldn't start here and I said why and he said well they had two hospitals which if you remember Muscatine used to have we had two two Hershey and Bellevue right. and I think that up there anyway the doctors he said you have to make a decision you're either going to go to one or the other and they didn't get along uh, the same thing has happened, by the way, in uh, 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 Warsaw that's happened here. They now have a, a county hospital, huge hospital, over the years. And as you have gone to community, Muscatine community, and right. one hospital. Right. And, uh, uh, but anyway, the situation is such when I went to Hartford City and uh, the physicians were real friendly, came in off the golf course to welcome me. And uh, I did start out by just putting my shingle out, though I didn't get the, uh, the greetings that some of the newer physicians get, uh, well, or gu former, guarantees, you know, <laughs> you know that you might think on income-wise. But uh, they were friendly, and I thought this is a nice place to live. 
Well, I'm happy you found such contentment, and, and it was content, or you wouldn't be there yet. Uh, just real kick uh, off there, you spoke of golf. I like how you relate to the people with us today. Uh, where you golf in Indiana? Because it's rather apropos right at this time. Well, I was able to uh, tell Don here earlier that uh, <laughs> uh, I did have a little auto accident about a couple of years ago, uh, and I was probably thinking and rushing down to play uh, Crooked Stick, which is where the PGA uh, starts this week today. Starts I think. today, yes. and which is one of the four big terms. And we've always been interested in golf, and uh, so uh, I I can't remember the score, <laughs> but it was it was pretty we don't high. Talk about that, yeah. But uh, <clears throat> it uh, it is a beautiful golf course, and I'm glad that Indiana is able to have one of the big four yes, tournaments. They they haven't really. Uh, had any of the major tournaments, yeah. you know, before. Well, that's great. So mm -hmm. you've had the occasion to play that particular I played course, that particular and I think you course. still do, don't you, occasionally? I, I've only played it the one time. Oh, just uh, the one time, okay. Because you, there again, uh, you better know somebody. You that, are a member <laughs> or else, yes, yeah, or have the proper right. You have to know right. a member in order to play. Uh, yes, it's, yeah, a, it's private a private country course. club, sure. Yeah. Well, I, that's always interesting to mm -hmm. hear these things, and one other thing uh, that we talked about briefly I'd like to bring up now um, I'm gonna put you on the spot a little bit again but I can do this <laughs> at least I think. Yeah, right. The subject right now of AIDS has obviously become very prominent and because of some of the problems that have transpired in our national workings where there have been dentists who have transacted giving AIDS to the patients become quite prominent and there has been a movement of a possible development of having a test required on all physicians and dentists. What is your thought on that, George? Do you think this is a, of a necessity? Well, I don't know if it's a necessity, but I, I don't see any problem uh, that would uh, Shouldn't be, be created. No. And I think it's important that uh, if anybody uh, should happen to in any way be able to transmit AIDS through contact uh, either the dental profession right. or medical profession, right. uh, th this should be uh, controlled in some way or other, and if that means uh, blood testing, uh, I certainly would not be against it. You're willing to accept I that? I would be more than willing. <clears throat> well, one other thing, too, that George had brought up to me uh, that he feels that hasn't been mentioned yet, or maybe it has. Now, I'm not in that profession. You'd know. But he thinks that, that should be a mandatory test for marriage. Well, that that would be something that would really be far-reaching, more so than just checking a doctor and a dentist. But I actually have, I think, I think there is some restriction on it, but I'm not sure just what. Well, I think there's a, <coughs> a, a, a it is a debatable issue now. Oh, yes. But uh, uh, we date back to when we got married, we had to have a serology, right. and that was to make sure that nobody was maybe uh, active in the idea of transmitting uh, syphilis. Social uh, disease, social right. disease mm -hmm. or anything like that. And uh, I don't see any different in the idea with AIDS. Uh, it doesn't mean that uh, the marriage would be disallowed, but it, it would be up to Have the to individual. It would still, right. the individual would know ahead of time uh, of the problems that might be involved. And uh, I, I would think it would be as important to me uh, in this day and age mm -hmm. as astrology was years ago in those days one other thing that George has presented me that I I am obviously a little away from the marriage area so I don't know what transpires nowadays but he said in Indiana the one thing that they do look at when the marriage uh, license is applied for is measles now can you further the conversation on why that uh, is this is very interesting yeah. to me well the uh, the three-day measles or German measles uh, if a uh, uh, mother were uh, would become, uh, a, if a lady would become pregnant and not have immunity, three-day measles, there's a, a, a great possibility of uh, congenital anomalies occurring in uh, the birth. And so there again, <clears throat> they are checked for measles and to see if they have immunity against the uh, uh, rubella, which is three-day measles. And then if they, uh, they don't have uh, at least they know this before uh, they're married and they can take uh, immunizations against it. Uh, 
Perfect. Uh, the, I mean, I, maybe Iowa has it, George. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what I the really know. Uh, yeah. situation is in Iowa. They've had that in Indiana for a good number well, of that's years. That's very interesting. Yeah. Now, I might also uh, continue the conversation and assure you that George is a true, a true seasoned citizen. He has curtailed his activities in the Medical Association to what? One day a week. One day a week. <laughs> and he has an associate that has joined him. And obviously, George is available, I assume, if there's any particular right. need. Uh, we, we've been, a, we built an office together in 58, which mm -hmm. is about 33 years ago. And we were full partners as long as we were continuing obstetrics. Mm -hmm. But when we got out of obstetrics, then we just uh, have the building and our associates and cover each other and that sort of thing. But I, my practice in the last year or two has been uh, from three days to one day. Why not? Uh, you learned it, it I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, I don't know how long that will continue. Well. But I do want to be active in uh, medicine in some way. and sure. I. Uh, it's one of these things you, after this many years, you have people you feel obligated well, to. Well, and, and, it would, and it would be uh, almost a wrong to discontinue completely with the knowledge that you have attained over the time. I think it would be, you know, detrimental to actually discontinue. Uh, you spoke of obstetrics. That seems to be a, no one wants to do it anymore with the malpractice suits and everything and your insurance. That has become almost a thing of the past. I, I see so often doctors just don't wish to get involved in it because of that, right? Is that still a, a Well, fact? You, you could spend a lot of time about <laughs> hey, what, sure. how malpractice affects the <laughs> practice sure. of medicine and uh, <laughs> the obstetrical field with suits that are filed. Uh, actually, Indiana has probably uh, a cap on some insurance. It's one of the few states that we do have on uh, liability and uh, malpractice insurance well, good. and I couldn't go into all that it no. take, but it no. it is uh, partly because our governor at one time was Governor Bowen who was a practicing general uh, general practitioner so he protected and his he own. kind of protected <laughs> his own I guess and uh, it, it does it has drawn though some physicians in Indiana just because of our uh, fee schedule is being less and but when, when the, these suits are settled and they're so high, the physician in turn is going to have to some way charge higher rates and that's part of the reason that some of the, the fees are so high because of malpractice. That's suits. unfortunate again. Yeah. Uh, well, let's not get into the fact no. here of the lawyers. I mean, we just yeah. want to touch on that. But I'd like now just to take uh, a couple of minutes left here we have to bring the other side of Dr. George being with us today or tomorrow, I guess, actually, we're going, I say we're because I'm part of the group, fortunately, I guess, start our 50th anniversary of having left the great halls of the Muscatine High School. So George is here as our president of our class to make this horrendous celebration come true. So he has a number of things planned, I know, for the oncoming weekend, and we're all waiting uh, patient or impatiently, I guess, to see what he has in mind. We've all been given some forewarning of what, in order to make the reservations, obviously, we, George had to do that. But he's been very busy getting in touch with everyone. We were discussing some of those that will and will not be there. And it's always unfortunate. Even at 50 years, some decline. They just, uh, well, who knows <laughs> what their feelings are. George has letters from some that he'll pass on to us as the evenings transpire. Our registration, as I recall, starts tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Uh, with a free day in a sense and then works all through day and then Friday evening we're invited to stop by and just to kind of get hello to each other and then Saturday we're going to have quite a expedition going on the Kent boat but afterwards is what the thing is. We're going to go cholesterol, right? Well, right. <laughs> uh, Saturday morning also we will have buses oh, yeah, tour, oh, tour Muscatine. Yeah. I've seen and, it so I won't And go. we have to go, uh, <laughs> we have to, we're going to tour our old high school. Uh, we got the go signal that the asbestos problem has been <laughs> taken care of and we got the go signal to go through the old high school which I look forward to and then other places of interest of course in Mustine uh, we will stop at and I've heard about the new YMWCA gotta see that. Gotta see that. and I'd like to see it and uh, then we'll have our banquet and uh, uh, then again, Sunday morning, we'll have a breakfast, and then finally we will go to uh, Rosanna Nelson, uh, who is 
maiden name was Klebe, right. out in the country for a little lunch. And uh, I should mention that probably our uh, most noted uh, class mate, I would say, would be Stan Howe. Stan who was, did well. <laughs> Stan, Stan has done well, I know, in Muscatine, and he was valedictorian of a class, yes. co-valedictorian yeah. with Goss? Albert, Albert right. Goss. Right. And then I didn't do well. another, <laughs> another uh, and I'd like to mention another person that's in Muscatine would be Lucille Steinmetz Carver, and she was representative senior girl right. in our class, plus she was a salutatorian. Right, plays so, a mean piano. Plays a big piano, <laughs> and we're hoping that she will play the piano sure. at our uh, uh, Free entertainment, we're always looking for free Oh yeah, we're looking for that. Yeah, right. So it, it's a class that a few of the members have remained here in town, yeah. is what I'm trying to say. Right. And we, have done well. I think you've mentioned we have some possibilities of, of outlying districts like California, Texas, uh, areas like that, that there will be some coming, which uh, involves an expense to come here, but this is a once-in-a-lifetime celebration. 50, 50 years. Still as big, as 50. young as we are and everything, right, George? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> 50 years. So again, we sure appreciate your mm -hmm. coming with us today and going through the, well, your history of uh, Indiana, which we're so happy that your life turned out so well for you and so proud of the family that you have uh, brought into the world with us and happy you have the two grandchildren with us with you today that they're going to celebrate and enjoy too and i know we're looking forward to a large tour i think you i think i've heard not from you i haven't talked to you personally yet but some of the classmates we have over 100 and some reservations uh, uh, husband and uh, that's totally, husband yeah. and wives will yeah, be over totally, 150 yeah. maybe yeah. close really? to 155. Beautiful. now help me how many were in the class we had 196. I couldn't recall. Someone asked me. I said 160. I thought I'd, I really didn't. Uh, we recall. had 196. Okay. okay. And uh, I'm sorry to say that uh, I was informed last night that the 47 are deceased. Yeah, we do have. So we, we hate that figure and hope that it stays the same and not increases over the years. Amen. Year. Right. We have to feel now, that way, but we can't. Even as a doctor, you can't control that, can you? You can just help out. Have any advice for us seasoned citizens? We always look for free, you know, like we always like to kid about. <laughs> it hurts your doctor. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. No, I suppose that uh, the usual thing, you know, uh, trying to live a good, healthy life and Amen. leave the exercise and all exercise, the good things. Right. Trying to keep the waistline down as best we you can. You to say that to me? <laughs> and, uh, but we want to enjoy Saturday night dinner anyway. Oh, we do. Anyway, we do. Know. Well, again, we surely appreciate you taking a minute out of your vacation time, as it were, although one day a week isn't really strenuous work, I assume, for you. But, but it keeps you active right. because the phone right. still rings, you oh, know. Yes, and I'm sure. Can, like you said, you have one-on-one -on -one basis with a lot of people, I'm sure. But we do take, uh, again, so much thankfulness that we are meeting at 50 years, mm -hmm. and we thank you very much that you've taken the time with us today to kind of reminisce back over the years and again we'd like to thank you for watching our program and we'll be back with you again so again for this program we say thank you and goodbye